China buried millions of gallons of salt water under sand. Sounds like a bad idea, right? It's not. It's kind of genius. Here's the problem. Shifting dunes eat roads, choke cities, and turn the air into a dust storm machine. Taklamakan Desert, Kubuchi. Desert. So engineers tried something counterintuitive, put salty water where the sun can't reach it, under the sand. Two things happen. First, water wicks up. Salt crystallizes at the surface, forming a hard crust. Second, buried water cuts evaporation, so you need far less to keep plants alive. Crews drilled wells into brackish aquifers along desert highways. They ran subsurface drip lines under the sand. They planted salt-tolerant shrubs, saxol, tamarisk. Plants laid out in checkerboard grids. Brine seeps below. Salt crust forms above. Roots knit it together. Result, dunes stop marching across roads. Dust storms drop along those corridors. Subsurface drip cuts water use dramatically versus spraying. Projects move millions of gallons over years to stabilize hundreds of kilometers of green belts. This isn't farming the desert. It's an engineered buffer, living windbreaks, and mineral crusts that tame the surface. Some projects layer clay or lay geotextile barriers so salt stay put, then periodically flush sections with fresher water to protect plant roots. Downsides? Yes, salinization if done wrong. So they use brackish water only where soils are already saline. Choose halophyte species and keep salty layers below root critical zones. It's a tool, not a cure-all. Physics, capillary rise, plus crystallization, crust, shade plus depth, less evaporation, bury the salt water, grow a living net, and the sand finally sits still. Desserts feel unstoppable, so it looks unreal. But with a little chemistry, a little plumbing, and plants that like salt, the world's biggest sandbox plays by new rules. The twist, they hid the water, then let the salt do the heavy lifting.